Hi everyone, Paula McCoy, Colors for Earth. So tonight I'm going to talk about um, working with a crackle glaze using color concentrates underneath that crackle glaze and some precautions, things that you may or may not know about a crackle glaze. Um, if you don't want to use a crackle, you don't have to. You can just use a clear or a transparent glaze over anything you're doing. I just, this is a different topic. I thought maybe it would be interesting and you might want to know more about it. So let's get started. I had previously tried to do this live. Um, I kept having camera problems, so I'm recording this and then I will upload it for you. Okay, so this is, let's go back to this piece. So this was a piece that I did years ago. This is a teapot um, disposable bag dispenser. So it has a hole in the bottom. So you put your plastic grocery bags in this. Um, let me move it out. In it, and then you pull out from the bottom. So you've got this hanging on the wall, and you're just pulling them out the bottom. Okay, really cool. Um, it's a decorative piece only because of the crackle glaze. Okay, because crackle glaze has literally cracks in it. So therefore, the bacteria, any type of food, would get down in there and uh, create bacteria. So not would not be healthy. Um, if you're using it on like a vase or say like a utensil holder, put it on the outside. You wouldn't want to put it on the inside because it would have cracks in it, creases. So it would not hold water. So you need to use a compatible clear glaze. Um, ours would be the CSP01 gloss medium that you would put on the inside of this. Um, I'm not saying you have to do this design with the crackle glaze. This is just a technique on this particular piece here. Okay. The other thing is when you're doing a crackle glaze and let's pretend that this piece is out of the kiln. It's, it's been glazed with the crackle glaze. Okay. So it has the CGE 598 clear crackle on it. Okay. So when I reach into the kiln to remove it from it sitting on stilts, I would either take a paper towel, a latex glove, or a coffee filter is what we used to use. Um, and I would grab the piece and take it out. Do not grab it with your hands because when you put your hands, the oils from your hands are actually going into those creases or cracks and it seals the crack. It will not allow you to put any color down in those. And so I will do that whenever I glaze this piece and I take it out of the kiln. I'm going to touch half of it and not touch the other half. And I'm going to show you why you don't want to touch it. Okay. Especially if you have oily hands. Okay. So grab it with a coffee filter, a glove, something that you're not touching directly onto the crackle glaze. So that's the first precaution. Um, when you're glazing, and I'll glaze that piece later. But when you are glazing with the crackle glaze, the cracks really make a difference on how you brush the glaze on. So if you do long flowing strokes, you're probably going to get cracks like this. And it also depends on the bisque wear. Um, you know, and they used to say to um, apply it. Ours works on 04. A lot of times I remember other companies, it needed to be like an 05 so it would have a better crackle. So instead of having the two cone difference, this is regular ceramic. It's not mid range, it's regular earthenware cast piece, is what this is. But when you're applying the crackle, if you dibby dabby, you're going to have little fine cracks. Or if you just use short strokes, but if you use those longs, if you change directions, it can change the direction of your cracks. So keep that in mind when you're glazing. Be mindful of that. Okay. All right. So I am going to go back to my piece that I started. Um, I have in the comments, there'll be a link to the blog page on the website, which has the pattern. Um, I need to correct a number. I typed this up real quick, but it's got your pattern pictures. At least you can see it. It's got the list of colors. So you just click on that link on the log page, blog page, excuse me, and uh, you can print that out and then use it however you would like. 
So when you're transferring a pattern, I use tissue paper. I lay my pattern over, or lay the tissue over the pattern, use a pencil, draw it on, and then when I go to my piece, I lay it down, and then I use what's called a Statler Triplus Fine Liner. It's like a Sharpie point. So let's just add, um, let's add another blueberry up here. Doesn't mean I have to paint it. So I'm just tracing over the pencil line and it comes off on the piece. It doesn't have to be a solid line. You can see that these lines are sketchy. If you feel like you need it, you can go back with the marker directly on the bisque, just very lightly. It's a watercolor marker. It's going to burn off. Okay, But that is a way you can use this method of transfer on bisque or greenware or on top of a non-moving glaze if you're doing Myolica or Magellica technique. Okay, So what I've done is I've got uh, 122, sorry my bottles are well used, lemon peel and I put three coats on the pear while it was wet and we can do this again. Um, I'm going to grab my number 8 score shader, 5200 number 8, and I'm going to load it with the yellow, and I'm writing towards me, I'm going to corner load in the green, which is 160 key lime, and I'm going to blend it on my palette quickly. Flip my brush over, green next to green, and the green goes on the right side, so I'm just pressing down completely, pulling along that side, and then coming off the brush. Now I'm going to put some more yellow out, and I'll show you. Uh, I've already done this, but I'm going to add another coat since my other video got interrupted. So load, blend press and then lift up as you get to the end so that you can come off. If you have an area that, like I did, that went outside where I wanted it, I'm just taking a damp brush. This happens to be the small Sumi and I'm just pushing it off. Because our products are in a gel base, it has a little bit of an open time to it and allows you to get that off of there if you need to clean up an area. This is on a curve, so it's a little more difficult. Now, this piece here would not be food safe. I, I, it's the only piece I had handy. It could be used for wrapped candy, but you wouldn't want to put anything liquid in it because if I'm going to put the crackle glaze on it, then I wouldn't want to. Okay. Um, the crackle glaze, like this bag dispenser, um, a vase... Like I said, a utensil holder, a birdhouse. I mean, there's all different types of uh, things, just as long as it's not anything you're going to use for food. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I wipe the green out on my um, paper towel. Go back, make sure the writing of the brushes towards me. I'm going to corner load in the Florida orange this time. 116 Florida orange. blend on my palette and this goes on the other side. So let's go down here and do this one first. This is like a shadow or a blush to that pair. This is just a real simple design. If you're new to painting, this is a good way to start. Or if you're just looking for something easy to do, this is one of those projects that would be good for you. Okay, so I just keep reloading for each pair because I want that color strong. Now the other thing that you need to be mindful of is um, yellows eat red. See how I'm just pushing that, telling it to get back inside the fence where it belongs and push it back over there. So yellow eats red. The orange is in the red family. So you want to be a little heavier with those colors because otherwise they could go away. All right. So be heavier with it. 
All right, I'm going to rinse out the yellow out of my brush. A lot to get all the moisture out on the paper towel. And let's turn it around here. I've got two coats on my apple. Okay, so we've got the 111 red geranium. Two to three coats on your red. And then we're going to shade this with deep cranberry. You can kind of see the darker on the sides. And I'm going to show you how to put an actual blush on it with a yellow. Because yellows eat red. Remember I just said that. And when you add yellow to the top of a red, it will actually eat through it a little bit and cause a highlight there. And a lot of people um, don't know that. So you need to be, um, like I said, heavier with your red or just be aware that you're going to, uh, and we want it to eat through it for a highlight. Okay, so same thing, right near the brush, I loaded my base coat, which is the 111 red geranium, corner load into the deep cranberry, blend, blend, I'm going to grab a little bit more of the deep cranberry, a lot of times when I first load the brush, I'll do two uh, loads with it just to get it worked into my brush and I'm bringing this around the outside I'm going to load again with just the cranberry if I needed the red I could just go back and corner load in the red okay so you can kind of see there's a little bit of a dark shadow on there now for the highlight on those I can grab just a round brush let's grab this one this is the size 4 this is the 2004 KB and I'm going to go back meaning Kalinsky blend it's what we use for the paste also so if I wanted say right here I wanted a highlight on there so that's going to eat through the red and it'll show a little bit lighter in that area. And you can't see that until after it's fired. Okay, so I'm reloading, keeping the cranberry to the outside and just kind of following it. And then I'm just kind of blocking that in. I'm going to load both corner load in the red, corner load in the cranberry. Okay, and I can lay that brush down, grab my round, and put a little comma stroke there. Load that square shader back up again, red and cranberry. Red and cranberry, blend, blend. I'm going to go ahead and do this other one and then I'll come back and add the highlight. Press all the way down to fan the brush out. The larger the brush you can use in the area, the softer the look. And just remember that you should apply multiple thin coats of any product versus one thick heavy coat. Okay. So now that we've got those highlights on, and then hopefully that'll show up. It doesn't show as much on here, and I, like I said, I did this back in 2000, and I don't even remember if I did that on those, but um, I want you to see it, you know, on this one when it's fired. Okay, so for the leaves, we have two greens that we're going to use. We've got the 160 and 162. And we're going to just make this a real simple leaf. Remember to shake those colors. So that they liquefy. The darker the color, the thicker they are. So it takes just a minute to shake them up. Get them agitated. 
and sometimes the grains are thicker so that you need to possibly add just a drop of water. So all I did was stick my handle of my brush into my water basin and brought that dot of color, or excuse me, dot of water over there just to loosen that up a little bit, okay? All right, so we're gonna still use the number 10 square shader. You could use the Sumi if you wanted. Load with the green, which is 160 key lime. This is still the number eight square shader. Fully load with the light, corner in your dark. And when you corner load, you're looking at a third of the brush is all you wanna load. If you're halfway, that's okay. But if you start getting further across, you need to rinse and start over. Always blend, blend. Dark next to dark. I'm going to add a little bit more of the light green. That dark is really strong. You don't need a whole lot of it. Now, this particular piece is a bowl, so I want the dark color to the inside. The lighter color would be on the outside. And I'm just going to start it kind of at an angle and just kind of wiggle it a little bit and come off the tail. blend so I reloaded I cornered cornered and I'm just gonna go through here and do all of these in this direction so I'm just kind of waving it and then lifting up and coming off that chisel edge reloading for each one so that I keep the same color value and I'm gonna pick up just what's in my blend there So this is just a real, it's not even really a brush stroke per se. It's just an easy way to learn a simple leaf. So press down, the more you press down, the harder you press down, the larger the stroke is going to be. So a brush stroke is a combination of color, which we have two colors on here. Pressure will determine the size of that stroke or leaf and the motion. So in this motion, we're giving it a little bit of a wave to create some interest and a wiggle. So color, pressure, and motion. And I've got an old brush and it's got, it's very worn and it's given me a jaggy line, which I'll show you how I clean that up when I do my detailing. So you can see I'm not doing it really fast. It's nice and slow. And I'm thinking about what I'm doing as I'm lifting off that stroke. And I'm going to see if I have another number 10 or number 8. And I do. I'm going to switch brushes. This one has really been used. Always dampen your brushes and water before you start. Okay. It's kind of like when you uh, wash your hair. You always wet your hair first before you put the shampoo in it. So think of it that way. So work that color in, the fully load. Riding the brush towards you. Corner. Blend. Blend. much better. Okay, so we've got some over here. And I should have flipped my brush over because I just put that on the opposite side. But that's okay. We're not going to be really picky about it. But if you wanted to, then your dark would be to the inside. So I'm going to take, I've loaded my brush, I'm going to turn the brush over when I do this one. Okay, and I'm going to kind of push because of the angle it's setting in. It's just easier to do it that way on that one. Okay, so I turn my brush over so that my dark is to the center again. Corner, corner, blend, blend.
Okay, just a little bit of a wiggle. So, really simple. I say that. Um, you know, you need to practice. Practice on some paper. And I'm not even following because of the curve of this bowl. It's hard to go that direction. So, I just, the marker will fire off. So, don't freak out about that. pattern is a guide okay seems like we need something up here so without putting a whole nother uh, piece of fruit what I'm gonna do is just make a group of leaves like it's coming off of a piece that's wrapped around the other side and I need to do that up here also okay now it's a little more balanced um, other than you know I've got four and four technically should have odd numbers But I won't tell anybody if you want. Okay. Um, next, we need to do the um, blueberries. And then we'll do stems. So for the blueberries, I'm going to use CC143 Sapphire Blue. It says bright, vibrant. And it's very thick. So you can see it's extremely thick. So what are we going to do? We're going to add water. Okay. So for the berries, what I'm going to use is what we call a spotter brush. Okay, the spotter is also nicknamed the berry brush. So it has shorter hairs. Let me see if you can see that. Compared to this one, the four round. See how much shorter the hair is? So the reason for that, and I'm going to show you on paper dampen my brush. I'm going to keep a little bit of water in that just to mix that up a little bit more. So I'm going to fully load with that blue. Okay. Now when you're doing these berries, okay, you can see them on here. You hold further up on the brush on this particular, particular berry brush. I got paint all over me. So you hold up here so you can freely move it. So you press down you spin it, and I didn't press down hard, and you get a perfect grape, berry, center of a flower. Let's do that again. So I'm up here, and I'm just kind of rolling the brush. But when I press down, I'm not jamming it down, because if you jam it up next to the ferrule, which is the silver part, you're going to end up breaking the hairs off. Okay? So I'm going to sit the brush down gently. I'm going to spin it, for me it's to the right, and lift up. Okay, let me see if I can bring in uh, the side camera and see if that will show you better. Alright, so let's look over here. I want you to be able to see the brush, how it's straight up and down, okay? So I press down gently, let's start over, press down gently, spin in between my fingers, and lift up. So see, it looks kind of yucky at the moment, but you have a perfect circle. You see that? Okay. So let's do a couple more. 
fully load fully loaded come back on your brush so I'm up here about a inch and a half to two inches from the top normally we hold our brush you know down here closer to the ferrule of the brush where the ferrule and the handle meet but now I'm gonna for this particular brush I'm gonna hold it up higher I'm gonna gently set it down and let it fan out and spin and you have a circle let's do it again sometimes it's hard to talk and say at the same time so sit spin it and lift okay there are uh, what's called daubers there's different things out there there's tiny sponge on a stick you could use that this is just another way um, another brush a different way to do it and uh, hopefully you'll give it a try so again this is the spotter brush the 620 uh, this particular one is a five um, there's a number um, this is the three no this is the one excuse me and then we have I thought I had it out here anyway you can look on the website and you can see all the different uh, sizes and what's available okay so I'm gonna press spin and lift straight up so I'm not moving so color pressure determines how big the size of the brush also determines and then the motion is we are spinning it or twisting it in our hands so press spin and lift and usually when you do this one coat is enough press spin and lift press spin and lift it's like you're giving it a bad hair day I'm trying to make sure I get this on both cameras for you press spin and lift okay so when I press it down it's basically lined up with that outline the tip of the brush spin it to make your complete circle so press spin press spin press spin press spin and lift press spin and lift press spin and lift press spin and lift okay all right so I'm going to get rid of that uh, side camera all right so this is the one that I'm gonna show you the crackle why you don't want to so I'm going to go ahead and just put a few of these on here this is just a test piece just so we have something on there so this would be great for grapes you could put two colors on your brush also rinse in your brush always check it to make sure you don't see any color still coming out if you do then you need to continue to rinse it okay all right so now um, let me wipe out the center of my palette so we can use it Usually I will set my sponge, if I'm not doing strokes, in the center of my palette so that I can have a place to wipe my brush off as I change colors instead of rinsing it in the water. Okay, so now we need uh, some brown 
for the stems on the leaves and the fruit. So I'm going to use CC 186 Burnt Sienna. If your Burnt Sienna is thick, definitely add water to it. This is a uh, fresh, fresh batch. Okay, so then you want to grab, um, I like to use the number 2, 3600, number 2 liner, Kalinsky liner. Remember to always dampen your brush. I left a little bit of water in my brush to thin that brown down. Now, on our stems, we've got just a straight stroke, and then we have a little bit of that fatter part of the stem. And then you can pull into the center vein on your leaves. We're going to use, you can put the brown also on the berries, but we're going to come back with black on those. I think you can see, uh, maybe you can see both colors on there. It's almost like it's a trial run, and then you can come back and do the other to accent it. So just remember, you're starting that stem kind of down in to the pear. Don't start it at the top. And then it's like it's got a little smile there. And then you just want... So I'm going to make this stem come from here. This one here. And I'm just kind of following the flow of my leaves. Because they may have changed since I painted them from what my pattern was. If you need to make that little smile in there, you can. I'm going to come back and accent it with black later. So I'm trying to make this fairly simple. So that anybody can do this. So it's just blocking it in. Let's do this one up here. And, well, let's one thing at a time. Getting ahead of myself. Constantly reloading. One more. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so there are little, what I call, hairy protrusions coming out the bottom of your berries. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little better. So they would be on the opposite end of where your stem is. We also have some of those on the apple. I noticed I forgot to put them on there, but you have them here on the apple and the pear. You can, like I said, you can do them in brown first and then do them in um, the black. Let me lay that down there so you can see that as I'm working. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of those in, still using that same brush. Just little tiny fine lines. So I'm anchoring my pinky over here to steady myself. Okay, so I need to do this apple here. And you'll be able to see it more when I do it with the black. Okay, so I think I got everything. All right. So we're going to go to the black CC 101 Cobalt Black. Again, shake. A little bit of water to thin that. And I thin it as I go. If you thin the whole puddle, it's going to evaporate before you ever use it all. So just thin one side of it and then load. So I do what I call like a sketchy outline. It doesn't have to be a solid. Let's reinforce that stem center vein. You could put side veins on it if you want. I think I put those on the pattern. And then just a wavy. And the reason I do a wiggly or wavy because then you don't have to be perfect. Because then if all your lines are like that, then they're going to look great. So I'm just kind of doing like a partial outline. And then you can do some little accent strokes to kind of give it some character. some more water to that black. All 
Okay, so same thing with the blueberries. You still need to come back and then do at least one side on those. And I always pull my strokes towards me. Um, 99% of the time. There's some things, like right now I just flipped it over since I was talking about it. Um, but it's easier, I think, as a beginner, to pull them towards you. And if you press a little harder, you get a thick and thin line. This particular piece being rounded, it's hard to anchor. Um, normally I would anchor on my table and be able to do it, but um, I have to be on the inside here. So it makes it a little harder to maneuver. See, so just wiggle that a little bit. Okay, so any of those leaves, remember, that had kind of a jagged, I've cleaned them up just by creating that wiggly outline, and I'm just double checking to make sure I put everything in, and I'd forgotten those veins, so just double check yourself all the way around, and then you want to sign it, of course. And I usually sign mine inside of a leaf. Okay. said constantly rinse it okay so let's put a, a like this one has this one has splatters on it um, which you could do 
and it also has the blue rim so I definitely want to do the rim around the edge here Let me grab my little wheel so this is just a lazy Susan turntable type of a thing and I'm going to use a uh, one inch foam craft brush it has a beveled in or a triangled in in the straight side the wood and the plastic is here we're going to stay right on the tip never going past where it's got that v so i'm not going to lay it down on this edge so for instance i'm going to doesn't matter what the shape is and this has a little bit of a wave to it it could be a square a triangle a pedal plate it doesn't matter you can do this so you're going to stay right on that little triangle edge kind of right in the middle of it and you're going to go around the area okay so i think i'm going to use the blue oh, get that over there see if i can get some more of this out it's super thick i'm going to dampen this brush because that needs to be thinned down first of all that worked up and worked into the brush it needs to be thin enough it's not gonna you don't want it so thin that it's gonna run but you also need to be able to it needs to be able to come off so I'm going to stay right in the middle and I'm just going to slowly use the turntable to aid me in turning the piece and as long as you apply the same amount of pressure all the way around you will have an even edge I'm going to flip the brush over usually you can go around twice and then you need to let it dry and because you're putting pressure on that edge you're not um, sometimes you're not getting a good coat of that color so sometimes I'll even come back and just lightly tap it along that edge as long as I've already got my band there but I need to let this dry for a minute you could even come back and put um, some comma strokes I'm feeling like it's kind of empty maybe we'll do and eh, let's do some dots of red I think that would be cool I'm going to put out some more of that uh, red geranium 111 that we used and I'm going to use a handle of a brush I'm trying to find one that I like I'm going to test it here to make sure I like that yeah so this is a fairly uh, good size handle um, and as long as you load for each dot you will have the same size dot if you keep dotting on one load you will get what's called graduated dots and they slowly get smaller and smaller okay so if you load for each one you should have the same size dots I just felt like it kind of looked naked Kind of patriotic with the red and the blue this would make a great um, 70s 
center place centerpiece bow for the 4th of July holiday. You can have fruit in it or if we do the crackle on it we will um, you would only put um, wrapped candy in it. Trying to see where else I need to put some just to make sure it's balanced out. Okay. All right, so our blue is dry enough that we can go back and put another coat on it. So, mm, I don't know if I can, you can see that it's even on the back side too. Now this has a little bit of a dip to it, but you get the idea that it's around that. So it doesn't matter what the shape is. This is a good way to do it. Now, I don't think I'll splatter this. Um, I'm just going to add some color to this piece just because we're going to crackle it. And I haven't decided if I'm going to crackle the bowl or not. I probably will. I just want something on here so that when we uh, come back and look at it, you can kind of see what was going on. I'm just going to add some, like some little leaves here for the berry. I just want some other color. That way we get a true representation of the same thing that's happening on the bowl. Okay. Now, of course, I've got to let some of this dry. Before I can the leaves maybe I can get away a lot of times on um, the smaller leaves I'll just do one side instead of both because of the fact it makes it extremely dark and depending on the piece it could be too overwhelming so a lot of times I'll just do the one side that one's kind of squished That one's still wet. Okay. Good enough. Just put some color on there. Now, of course, this um, red is going to have to dry before we can put the crackle on. And then whether or not I want to do anything on the back, I may just put some red dots on it. And then I'll come back and show you uh, the glazing. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to apply the crackle glaze now. So I'm just putting some out in a cup. CGE 598 Clear Crackle. And I am going to put it on the bowl. This just will be something that um, you're not going to be able to put soup or anything liquid in. Okay, always fully load your brush. Get that worked in there. I'm going to try to leave it on the turntable so you can see it, but I may have to pick it up. So, the let's start out with this piece. So, if you go long strokes with it, 
you should have larger cracks. If you start dibby dabbing, I call it, and just really willy nilly, so to speak, where you're just putting it on in a different, not a consistent, you know, stroking method, you have the possibility of getting more smaller cracks, basically, is what's going to happen. Set that on something. All right, so on this one, I'm going to, and I just finished painting this. If it had been overnight, uh, just to make sure that uh, you don't smear any color, I'm just taking a small mister bottle, not the ones that you pump with your hands that have the long stream of water. You just want, and this will kind of let you see, um, you know what, I'm thinking this. I don't think I'm going to glaze this. This, if I remember correctly, it is soft fired. Mm, maybe not. Okay, I'm going to go for it. It just looked and felt like it was soft fired, which means it was fired to an 010. A lot of times I have leftover bisque from retreats that I've done, and sometimes it's hard to remember uh, what it is, but we're going to go for it. So if it was overnight, I'd let my color dry. I always missed it before I glaze because you've got a wet, soppy brush that's coming in on dry color. And if you do that, you're liable, if you overwork it, you're going to smear the color. So it's better that you have damp color, believe it or not. I've been doing this for 25 plus years, and this has worked for me ever since I was taught it uh, by Bruce Locke, is who taught me. Okay. So the longer the strokes, and I'm seeing a little bit of a problem with my brown. It seems to uh, lift up a little bit, but I'm going for it. So if your brown uh, would see it lifted off right there. And this is a good example to learn by. Um, if you see that or you see it cracking, add a little bit of the gloss medium to your color and that will correct it. It's just dried out is what's happened. And this one's, um, even though it was pretty liquid. So what I mean is, let me see if I've got some. Yes, I do. So before I use this 186 burnt sienna again, I am going to add some gloss medium, CSP01. And I'm just going to put a skim of it on the top. And it's falling down in there, so you really can't see that. And then just shake it up good. And it should be good to go. And I've got a little bit of a run there. Yeah, see it's lifting off on me. It'll give it character. Right? So I may have smaller cracks there because I'm dibby dabbying. Remember we talked about that? I'm going to just kind of pat some along the edge just to catch that. And the reason I'm patting and not dragging it across there is because there's a highly concentrated area of that sapphire blue and I don't want to, you know, always check your brush to make sure you're not lifting any up on it. Okay. Get rid of this one. All right. So we'll let that dry for just a minute. And then we'll... It's absorbing pretty fast. I've got a fan here. I'll turn that on real quick. Speed dry.
Okay, so I'm going to just come back. And I think I've got the right side. Um, the one that I dippy dabbed and the one that I pulled long, consistent strokes over. We'll see how it looks when it comes out of the firing. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and add... the coat to this. So, I will dry this at a third coat, and then um, I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the kiln.